Now, what I want to look at is the methods that the United States uses, or the US neocons in particular. And again, when I mean US here, in order to avoid it, I'm talking about its official foreign policy, its official policy. I don't mean the US people who have quite different interests in this. Let's firstly look at, to show that what they claim is the case, is untrue. Let's take, for example, claim that what US policy is based on is democracy. Well, let me take your country. I'll take the country of Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, nobody has a vote. Uh, pl all political parties are banned. Women are not allowed to drive cars. Women are not allowed to travel without the permission of male relatives. Uh, can you imagine this was, a, you know, Chinese women going to accept that they can't drive, that they can't travel without uh, male relatives? This is totally undemocratic. Do you see, uh, you would expect if the US foreign policy were based upon democracy and human rights, you would see a gigantic campaign carried on again, in the uh, media against Saudi Arabia. None. Why? Because Saudi Arabia supports the United States. Take Bahrain. Bahrain is a country in which there is, again, an absolutist monarchy. The majority of the population is of a different uh, branch of Islam to the uh, ruling family. It has great repression. Why do you see great campaign carried out by the United States foreign policy against uh, Bahrain? No, why? Because the US has a fleet base there. Let's take another example, Hong Kong. Um, last year there was a big fuss over the question of the election of the, uh, how you elect the governor of Hong Kong. Uh, the United States made a noise. Britain ruled Hong Kong for 150 years and never allowed the election of the governor of Hong Kong in what, any way at all for 150 years. But there were no complaints which came out of US foreign policy. Only when Hong Kong returned to China did we find complaints about this coming. This game shows that this policy was hypocrisy. 